to the Trust the Plan podcast. I'm Nick. And I'm Jim. And we believe by providing education and guidance, we can help you trust the plan. No, we can help you retire, retire confidently. confidently. Yes, go. that's it. So we talked the last few weeks about trusting the plan. Like, what does that really mean? Yeah. So we're going to provide the definition today in five minutes or less. It's exciting. So what does it mean to you? <laughs> Here's the notes. <laughs> Trust the plan. I mean, a plan you can trust, right? But I think before you even jump into the plan, it's got to be a plan. You can there trust. has to be a, a plan in place, right. right? How many times do we have prospects come in, people looking for second opinions, and we say, "Has your other advisor told you you're on track?" Right? How does your retirement projections look? And they look at you like, "I don't know. We never, we've never really done it." Right? Yeah, and, and it's it's the strangest thing, but some planners don't <laughs> plan. Right? Don't do any plan. It's a yeah. fact. Yeah. Some plan, like a lot of them, don't plan. Right. They're just like, give me your money. Right. They just want to take the money, manage it, talk about how the accounts are doing. And not, and not that those things aren't important, but the, the, the foundation of it is the plan, right? And you have to have a solid plan in place first. Yeah. The investments are very important. It's one of the, it's the driver, the vehicle of mm -hmm. a lot of the, the planning itself, but it's not everything. Okay? Right. So you got to have a plan uh, in the first place. And I would argue, you got to have a professional, right? There's a lot of planning websites like free planning tools, mm -hmm. but I, mean, I don't want to be rude here, but you know, I think they're trash. Yeah. <laughs> the ones you, when you log into your 401k, you, oh, see, you know, the sunshine or the cloudy day or whatever it your is. Your quarterly so. 401k statement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Please don't rely on these. Okay. <laughs> right. The other thing is, you know, we have, we can say garbage in, garbage out, right? Mm -hmm. So data entry is important. Uh, you have to know the tool. You can't just yeah. pick one and just think that you're an expert at using the software itself because it should be pretty robust and pretty technical. Yeah. No, absolutely. There's a, you know, in inputting information uh, incorrectly can, can cause tremendously different outcomes. Yeah. Especially over like 30 years <laughs> yeah. of, you know, assumptions, right? right? It's remarkable. You change inflation from 2.5 to 2.6 and now all of a sudden, yeah. You're not looking as rosy. Yeah. Uh, so and so, why reinvent the wheel, right? If if you have a, a professional that you can work with, who's been through hundreds of cases, right? Yeah, and, and who can help you formulate realistic assumptions too, mm -hmm. right? Because that's another thing is that we can go in every plan in our system and say, well, let's just assume we're going to make twelve percent. And how do you think every plan is going to look? What do we? You know, yeah, it's, it's not going to look very. Uh, it's going to look great, but not let me tell realistic. You, let me tell you. When I started in the business, I was an intern, and we were <laughs> the advisor I worked for was putting in twelve percent, ten percent. I think he was putting in ten percent, mm -hmm. and I was like, "You know, this looks great." And he's like, "Well, you should see what it looks like at twelve percent." <laughs> and I was like, "You know, after and then I started my own real career, right? And so I saw the two thousand two thousand one decline, two thousand eight." 2009 decline, mm -hmm. and there were the 10 years of zero, and I thought to myself, my entire career, the the market has returned zero. Mm -hmm. So, you know, forget about this 10% mm -hmm. BS. Right. I'm gonna use like five, right? Because that is super realistic. Right. Right. And that's what we use. And, and that's it. Like our job is not to show you a plan that makes you feel warm and fuzzy, right? Our job is to show you a plan that's realistic. And that will actually has a, a really high probability of coming true. Yes, that's right. High probability of success. And and like think about this, right? Yesterday, you know, this will be probably out in a couple of weeks, but yesterday the Dow went down about thirteen hundred points. And that can make you really feel kind of queasy, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't want to check them up the balances <laughs> last night. No. You know? So I didn't. And that's my advice for you is don't don't bother looking at days like that. Yeah. You know, wait for the weekend or, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but it can make you question what you put together, okay? So we want to have perspective just because the market's down right now, right? Doesn't mean that the plan is, is over, is ruined. Mm -hmm. Have perspective and say, well, now that we have a, a smaller portfolio, let's rerun the numbers and, see, and make sure it still works. Do we need to make any, any changes, any audibles, any adaptations, uh, um, 
and, and that could be necessary. Mm -hmm. But oftentimes, right, one bad year, the plan still works, mm -hmm. right? Now you get to like three years in a row, you know, we might have to make, you know, a more serious audible. Yeah. Okay. But that's not where we are today. Yeah. I, I mean, I think that's a really good point, right? Because when you see a, a day like yesterday, right, where the market's down, our minds have a tendency to snowball and spiral in a, in a bad way, right? And say, this is terrible. I'm never going to be able to retire. I'm going to lose it all, right? These extreme thoughts. Or if you're already retired. Right? Yeah, right. Um, but the reality is, yeah, nobody wants to see their accounts go down, but the right thing to do is to check back to the plan and say, how did it, how does this affect the plan? Does, are we still on track? Do we still have enough? You know, are we still in a, in a good position? Do we still have a high probability of success? And, and all those questions that, that we talk about when we do the planning process. Exactly. And, and even with the current values where they're down now, we're projecting forward at 5%. And oftentimes there's a quicker recovery, right? Mm -hmm. Where, you know, if you're down, if the market's down 15%, it's gonna take three years mm -hmm. at 5% to get back. You know, typically that's not the case, mm -hmm. you know, on average. That's not the case. Mm -hmm. And so if we're starting from a lower point, assuming a lower return than historically, yeah. that, it makes me feel like we're still in a good spot. Yeah. Unless you push the eject button when you're down in the hole, mm -hmm. right? I like Alice in Chains, what can I say? Yeah. <laughs> when you're down in the hole, push the eject button, and now what's cash pay, 2%? By the way, if, if your bank is not paying two, yeah. We should have a conversation. Yeah, that's a good point, right? Yeah. Because they, because the other, uh, you know, money markets and things have come up where banks have been really slow to come up. So very slow. It's a smart thing to look at. So if you eject, right, and now your future return is two, well, now there's a problem. You know, we have to have your money working for you. Right. But ultimately, this is what we think about when we think about the term trust the plan. We're we're really uh, heavy on financial planning, comprehensive holistic, you know, all of the areas, uh, estate planning, investment planning, insurance, tax, we're big on tax. So if all of these things come together for the comprehensive financial plan at planofpeak.com. And we just want to, you know, update that and make sure it still works before mm -hmm. we make any rash decisions. Yeah, I think that's good advice. So how long is that, Preston? 7.45. So it's like eight minutes of definition, right? Okay, it's uh, Nick and Jim signing off, trust plan.